treating ourselves as the last day of the Seattle Boat Show. We're super lucky that we have a, a boat show here. We haven't had favorite a chance. Favorite time of the year. Favorite time of the year, <laughs> except for the crappy weather. Um, we've just been so booked getting back from Mexico, getting the boat back down here to Seattle in the slip, starting the people working on the electronics as well as all the inverter system. Uh, so it's been busy, busy, busy this week, and obviously it's catching up from work because no vacation goes unpunished. We met up with our friend Jeff Sargent and immediately hit the docks on the boat show. I think we made it about five feet inside the exhibition center at the boat show and ran into this incredibly cool pop-up dock. It's five feet by eight feet. You just inflate it. Rigid dock. This thing's going to hang off of our swim platform. Super excited. Shows up in May. Thank you, Shaman. Really? Yeah. For you. With over 400 exhibitors, the Seattle Boat Show is the biggest one on the West Coast, so we had to kind of bolt through it because we had a bunch of work to do. Stopped in and talked to the Ray Marine folks, and they gave us a bunch of great feedback on our install. John, let's keep dropping your stuff. Uh -huh. Look at the garage sale, man. <laughs> I, I am a yard sale. <laughs> Go get it. <laughs> Did you have fun? I had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> so after the boat show, we took Jeff down to show him the progress of the refit, or should I say the destruction of the refit. So you can still kind of see where it says Sea oh, Spirit. Yeah. No, I can see them all. <laughs> yeah, But this uh, power cord, a little janky. Yeah. Wow, they tore this place apart. Yeah, it's bad. Wow. What does the helm look like? Ooh. Oh my gosh. It's gutted. <laughs> One of the first things we did was have all of the 10 year old electronics pulled out of the helm, making way to be able to put in the new Axiom multifunction displays as well as new controls for the autopilot as well as the screens and new VHF. We've been having to run a dehumidifier up on the bridge and it's been full every day uh, because of the water leakage from the hardtop. The cushions or something? No, or it's up here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh wow, yeah. There's that. Yeah, so, so that's been leaking and then it was puddling right down here in this uh, corner. Well, we're taking out the electronics. Of course it looks like uh, it kind of threw up on itself, but here's the filled in the uh, the old monitor. Here, right. Here is the glass helm. Uh, it's not fit, obviously, right? But uh, you get the idea. Kind of fun once that's done. I'll show you all about it. Um, get it down here. All nice and tidy as far as all the fusing and everything. Everything else looks like a mess, but it'll all be tidied up as everything is pulled. So you know, very excited. To, uh, what we got going on here. So once all the cables were pulled and connected to the backbone as well as the spurs, everything was integrated. We were able to have our digital radar overlay and our charts. Uh, we have a rear night camera uh, that also works for the day as well as a camera on the bow. Both of those video feeds are then enhanced with Raymarine's augmented reality system that overlays marker information from all of our cartography as well as our heading. Uh, it also uh, is integrated with our FLIR thermal camera that overlays the same information as well. Integrated into the system is a VHF radio, the Ray 91, that tracks AIS signals and also enables us to have a wireless VHF up on the bridge. Rounding out the installation, we have updated autopilot heads as well as RMK remote controls both on the bridge and in the pilot house helm so that we can control the MFDs if we have less than calm waters. 
So we took our single 2010 radar and chart plotter and updated it to a triple screen implementation on the bridge. Down in the pilot house helm, we kicked it up a notch by installing a glass cockpit flush mount surround. You ready? Yep. Here's a big reveal. There we go. Ooh. Right? Look at that. Yeah. That looks great. We're live. So now that this major electronics refit has been completed, we've been able to transform the helms on the Elliot from really basic chart radar functionality to have fully integrated situational awareness across all of our cartography, our radar, our bow and stern video with augmented reality overlays as well as flare thermal imaging, AIS integration of all of our engine vitals and integration into our audio and power systems as well. Okay, so today is kind of a work day. We haven't really had a chance to work on the boat since we got it um, and it's the weekend so we're going to get some things cleaned up. Okay, what's on your list? So we've got to install a power cord. We'll talk about how that got cooked later. We've got to measure out the battery space. We can put the lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries in. Got a bunch of cleaning. Pilot house seat, bench seats, all that kind of stuff we got to get done. So gross. Yeah. We've got rust on the staples. Uh, we've got some stuff that takes that right off, but we need to get that done. The rust on the windlass. Crapper is broken. Got to get that fixed. Uh, Gonna install some lights, get rid of the halogen, drop the uh, wattage from 1250 watts when everything is on down to like 120 when we put LED <laughs> on. It's That's awesome. Good. And it's not gonna happen today. We gotta wash the boat pretty soon. Yeah, those are the big things. Cool. That's quite a list. It's quite a list. Let's get cracking. Get cracking. So, next project I'm working on is I'm gonna take the rest off the staples rust just being out on the top of that ship for a month things just got really gross so um, I'm just gonna use Starbright rust stain remover and uh, see if we can drop Starbright and cleaned up all the staples and they look pretty darn good I'm impressed this one turned out really good I'm happy with that it's awesome so yeah, there's these footprints. They looked like rust footprints. I don't know what someone stepped in, but um, it uh, took it all off. Cool. Ta-da. All gone. Yep. Change the name. Yeah. Elliot. <laughs> yeah. What is that tool? It's a decal racer on Amazon. So that eraser did the trick after about 30 minutes and a bit of elbow grease. The name was completely off. Um, the name had only been on about a year, so my gut is it probably would have taken a little more effort if it had been on longer. So we'll provide links below both for the decal eraser as well as for the rust remover because it took what would have been easily a two-day job between the two and we got it knocked out in about an hour and a half. Uh, one of the last steps I'm gonna do here is buff all of this out so you can't see the shadow and we'll finally be able to put on the name. So I've been working on back of the boat. I think it looks pretty good. It's starting to get dark, so it's kind of hard to tell what I've got, what I've missed. I'm gonna call it a night for now and work on it tomorrow morning and hopefully we can get the rest of it off. It must be made by the same manufacturer because the dimensions are exact. Identical? Uh, identical. And I was watching it on Amazon and it was more than it was in my budget and they dropped it to half price. Really? Half price was in my budget. That matches the decor a little bit better. Yeah, stainless steel, matches the fridge, like that. 
think that should do the trick. And this will fit, lovely. So I'm super excited to get the name on the boat today. He's on his way over, uh, so we're looking forward to that. We are the Elliots, so it just seemed appropriate to name it Elliot. Black is down and the gold is on top of it. Uh -huh. And um, what happens is when I float my squeegee over it, you get a little tiny air gap between the two because they're um, because there's a little bit of a lip there. So typically you get a little line of bubbles kind of right around the edge. Mm -hmm. um, I'm rubbing it out as best I can, but and if there are any big ones, I'll pop them and get rid of them. Uh, but if you do see any, don't be alarmed. Uh, a day or two of sunshine on them and they'll go away. Okay guys, it's official. We have a name on the boat. We are officially Elliot. One of our unplanned refit items was a severely neglected power cord. The first night that we plugged it in, it immediately overheated. This is the number one reason for boat fires. So we took the opportunity to switch out to the latest technology. So when I talk about the latest tech, this is what I'm talking about. This is a smart plug. Uh, this is a 50 amp, 240 volt split phase plug. But what's cool about this, these tabs right here, and when you plug it in, the top of this receptacle actually clips onto the back of it as well. So it holds in two ways. Um, the other part is, if you look at these lugs, they're massive. They have 20 times the surface area than those pins did for connecting. These, the receptacles actually are watertight. There's actually a gasket around the entire outside here. You can see there's a massive gasket inside of this as well to ensure you don't get that water intrusion with salt water and start that corrosion cycle. Um, regardless of what kind of cord you have, putting a dielectric on there is key because it basically stops the corrosion. So this is a smart plug plugged in, and it has a pretty sweet dual LED indicator that you know that it's plugged in, it's carrying current. You can flip this down, and again, it locks right at the top. You know it's got a firm connection because of these stainless steel tongs, and it has a secondary connection. The last part is your insurance company generally will give you a deduction on your premium. Okay, I'm going to be in charge of replacing some of the light bulbs up here. Um, John got these online, Dakunu. Um, he got a really good deal. I got 10 of them in the box here. I took a couple of them out already. And this is what the new ones look like. And they're only like one and a half watts. So for about $25, we were able to switch out and reduce our watts from 1,250 watts to 120 watts. So all in all, I think it looks good. Yeah. Holy oh, Rory, we got a fire now, honey. Good job, baby. Hey. 
feet. Yeah, right now I'm pouring water all over the place. I'm doing a really good job of it too. Shit. So thank goodness this is just water from the water line. Okay, good. Otherwise I'd be super gross. Shit. And I'd be the one with my head in it, so I would say it would be grosser for me. Alright. What are you looking for? Uh, the blade cutter. Sit on the bed. What are you cutting? Water supply hose to the toilet. Now this stuff has wire in it. It makes it super flexible, but it also won't crush. Mm. But it also makes it tricky to cut the right length. Shorten it up. Yeah. Boy Scout says, never cut towards yourself. Right. I'm gonna have my badge taken away. So you only had to cut off that much hose? Straighter. Now, the arbiter of whether or not that's straight enough or good enough. Turn the water on, Let's see if it works. Is it working? Nope, it leaks. Is it leaking? Not yet. That's good. Where do all the wires go? You just jam them underneath or what? Uh, no, I just want to leave enough so that when I pull the toilet out, I have enough working room. So, hey, put a zip tie and I guess technically jam them up underneath. And the next part is, is whether or not I can put the toilet back without causing too much tension. Ta-da, it works. He fixed it. It started. We should go for a dinghy ride. Because we can't. A lot more than I do right now. What? You trust it a lot more than I do right now. <laughs> Our nameless boat. And then give it a little bit of juice once we get out. we stay close to the marina we wouldn't have to row that far Old gas, but we'll need to fill that up. 